Alrighty, video by Erico TV. Um, I like how he curates a bunch of videos together, and he's kind of found a way to make lots of money without too too much effort. He kind of just shares like an opinion that only lasts like ten seconds. Yeah, no, his videos I like because it's just like a compilations of shit that he finds online, which is always fun. I don't agree with a lot of stuff that's said in a lot of his videos, so let's just see what this video is and let's give our opinion and have a discussion. The video is called "Woke People Making Fools of Themselves." As always, video shall be in the description. Let's go. Furry here, so I think that's why they put me through the line, so thank you. What the hell is wrong with you people? I'm against racism, I'm against, against oppression. Have you experienced racism? Well, no, but that doesn't mean that I- Was that it? Where's the opinion? It's just some guy in a furry costume. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of these people, there's a lot of people who, when they get into that type of stuff, they sort of build an identity around it. It's like, dude, just like, if it's fetish shit, just enjoy your fetish shit. You don't gotta like, parade it around. Sure you can, but expect people to, to think that it's weird. Showing up at fucking animal costumes and shit. I've heard some really weird shit about the uh, the furry cons and such. There's a lot of a lot of mayhem, but it's like, all right, that doesn't really bother me. Do you just do whatever weird shit you want as long as it's not hurting people. That's fine. You experience racism? Well, no, but that doesn't mean that I can't be against it because racism is called by capitalism. Yeah, and capital. We have to overthrow capitalism. To get rid of it. To get rid of racism. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? I hate this argument. Against racism, okay, that's a, that's, yeah, standard opinion, which is good. You shouldn't be for <laughs> thinking that one race is over the, uh, better than over the other, because none of it matters. Um, no races, all humans are worthless. You can't be better than another person if, like, nothing matters. But, um, capitalism, igni uh, stoking racism, let's just say. I kind of agree. You ever hear of the term divide and conquer? If you can, we've said this on the channel before, if, if you haven't seen some of my other videos, if you can curate the general consensus in a certain pl time and place, you can control the moves that those people make, and you can profit off that shit. Um, if you can get a one demographic to hate another demographic, you can kind of control both of them. Um, so yes, uh, racism and just prejudice and discrimination, uh, that very much is reinforced by capitalism or capitalistic tendencies. Because if the goal is to make money, you'll do whatever it takes to make money. And that's a really good way to control people, is to get people to believe certain things. Overthrow capitalism. In my opinion, you should just take the best of all sorts of various economical governing systems. I guess we'll just put it into that label. Take them all and combine them in ways that give people space and freedom, but also doesn't both detract from the freedoms of other people who are part of that system. And doesn't create a bunch of needless amount of suffering, which unhinged capitalism 100% does that. Because that's the point. If, like... You allow people to do whatever the fuck they want and make money however which way they want to, you're going to get the absolute worst of people. It's inevitable. You have to have a, a cap when it comes to what you can allow people to do. And the best ways to make money involve cutting corners, destroying people, dividing people, battering them down into submission, turning them into slaves. You have a point when it comes to that's what encourages racism. That encourages most prejudices is people trying to make money. But overthrowing capitalism, you can, if you can moderate it in an effective way, you won't, like all this other shit won't be a problem. But you can't really expect that from people because the people who've found we best ways to exploit it have gotten themselves into these positions in which they can continue to exploit it at the expense of everyone else. Realistically, I don't think that could really ever happen. But in a hypothetical, optimistic lens, you would need to do something. You would have to put a cap on this shit. You have to prevent people from destroying each other, which that's never going to happen. So just find a way to learn how to play into the system and benefit yourself. Whether or, whether or whether or not it's at the expense of other people, it's really not going to matter at the end of the day as long as you get your buck. In order for someone to make a buck, someone's got to lose it. So it's pretty fucked, but you're not entirely wrong for some of the things that they said. I also like how he just adds like a basic reaction gif, 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 or video as if like that in itself is an argument. It's like, that's not really, that's not really contributing anything, Erico. but whatever, he's making money. I hate the word liberal, but I'm definitely like political, like revolutionary. Keep telling yourself that, darling. Revolutionary? What does that mean? I'm into liberation and the revolution. And what kind of revolution are you going for? Down with the five day work week, down with capitalism. I am a man, a woman, and- You're revolutionary? Dude, pick up guns and storm the goddamn capital. Burn down the senator buildings <laughs> or just buildings of people who are in these positions that reinforce the status quo. If you really want to be a revolutionary, you're going to have to chop the head off of the snake or whatever, or the hydra, or not just the head because it's just going to grow back, right? You got to destroy the whole thing. But that's not going to show up in the form of you just like protesting on the streets and sharing your opinion on a public platform. That's not going to do shit, man. 
You want to really want to be a revolutionary? You're really going to have to do some damage. It's just words. People are doing stuff to make themselves feel stuff. Woman and non-binary. So take that bar again, man, woman, non-binary. Yeah. I just take up the whole bar. Uh, whatever the fuck that means. I'm white. Are you sure about that? I'm a Caucasian because everything about me is different from an African-American. I, have I like the wah. Also, I've seen Secession. It's not bad. I haven't got, I've only seen it gone through the first season. I still gotta get through the rest, but yeah, give it a watch. All the non-binary, binary binary stuff. Okay. Um, I personally don't really give much of a shit one way or the other, because on one hand, the people who care about the non-binary stuff usually are people who are ironically enforcing the gender stuff because like the the right answer is none of it matters and you shouldn't judge people based on these labels that they have. And that applies both ways. The people who care about the non-binary shit and the people who disagree with it. It's all the same, just different sides of the same coin. On one hand, if someone asked me to respect their gender pronouns, if I like and respect the person, I would. It's kind of like, hey, I'm, my name is Bobbert. Call me Bob. Okay, I like you, Bobbert. I'll call you Bob because you want me to. If I don't like you, go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's my opinion. But on the other side, it's like <clears throat> people who really go against this shit are the types of people who like really find value and importance in the quantification of someone's gender and the stuff that comes along with that. It's all meaningless, all of it. None of it matters. But it matters to these people, and again, you can just get these people to fucking clash each other and create a discussion and make money off of it, right? That's the divide and conquer thing. Get these two different groups of people. Progressives and the anti-progressives. Feminists and the anti-feminists. The capitalists versus the socialists, the communists, whatever. Just get these motherfuckers to argue with each other and then just profit off the fringe of the argument. That's, that's what people do. So, yeah, it's dumb. Also, this next lady... The fuck? What's this? What's this all about? I have naturally straight hair. My nose is not giant. My lips are perfect. I'm different from African Americans because I'm white. My figure is just like Kim Kardashian, and she's a wonderful role model. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, we're rapid firing through this shit. That was fucking weird. There's a lot of stuff to go over, a lot of topics to cover. <laughs> How much of the video is being played here, because I always keep just chiming in. Um, what the fuck was that? Who cares what goddamn skin color you have? You want to be associated with a certain demographic or a certain this tribe? This is how I used to dress six months ago. And this is how I used to dress six months ago. Um, again, none of it matters. Quit, like, reinforcing the human's tribalistic tendencies. Your skin color doesn't mean anything. Quit putting people into these groups. It doesn't matter whether or not you're black or white or you're brown or yellow. Even just saying that offensive. <laughs> You get my point. None of it fucking matters. And if it matters to you, then you, your priorities in life are wrong. <clears throat> Quit breaking things down into these little groups or subsections of humans that you can just judge as if that means something. It doesn't mean anything. So dis disregard all of it. I'm Cody. Pronouns E, M, R, R's, or Z, Zem, Zer, Zer's, or really any neo pronouns that aren't Z, Her, Her's. I am a white, transmasculine, femme, non-binary, temporarily, mostly able-bodied, Neurodivergent, obsessive, compulsive, chronically ill, culturally Jewish, unitarian, universalist, non-monogamous, demi-low romantic, gray demi-bisexual, survivor of acute and complex trauma, millennial, and cat parent. What? She knows herself so well, and she's so clear about her gender that she has to read it off a screen. In the West, they got- What? <laughs> what the fuck, guys? Quit it with the identity shit, doesn't mean anything. Oh my God, what the hell? And Erico said, she's so in tune with her identity that she has to read it off a screen in order to remember it. It's like, yeah, that, that's pretty ridiculous, all that crap. It's just labels. You think that makes life easier to traverse now that you're this? You think that's gonna like reduce the trials that you're faced with in life? Try to find happiness and don't define it through the shit that other people give you. Like, that's just dumb. All that stuff is dumb. <sighs> yeah. That was, that was interesting, whatever all that was. <laughs> they got a movement called wokeness, where you are super sensitive about other people's issues and you become hypersensitive when other people, somehow or other, say things or mention things or refer to you without the respect which you or your super subgroup feel you are entitled to. It leads to very extreme attitudes and social norms, particularly in some academic institutions, universities. You talk about safe spaces, you talk about appropriate pronouns. Life becomes very burdensome, and I don't think we want to go in that direction. It does not make us a more resilient, cohesive society with a strong sense of solidarity. We must be more robust. Yeah, he's right. People need to toughen up and smarten up. And the reason why he's probably smirking the whole time is because he realizes the whole Western world has become a joke. Whoever the f wants to. Um, 
yeah, it's all just emotional padding. But also what Eric said, the Western world has become a joke. When has it not been a joke? Yeah, somehow respect back then. It's like everywhere you go, there's, colo there's history of endless history of colonialism, endless history of violence, mayhem, destruction, a bunch of backwards ideas in one place, a bunch of backwards ideas in this place. Wherever you go, people are going to get it wrong. The best that you can do is just choose the places that get the things that are wrong in ways that don't adversely affect you in such a negative capacity. It's the best that you can do. It's kind of like everything that I say in a lot of my videos. How I tr I'm trying to get the fuck out of America because it's a violent, hateful slave den that actively profits from the suffering of its people and all the people around. And Western world is, doesn't just refer to America, of course. I'm referring to America in mind when I'm talking about this because that's the thing that I have the most experience with. I'm, only, I'm born and raised ethnocentric dumbass Americans, what I am. Yeah, it's sort of just pick your poison wherever you go in the world, man. You gotta choose the, you gotta control for the stupidity or the stupidity that affects you in certain ways. Cause there's always gonna be stupidity everywhere you go, but the, the certain types of stupidity, where and when it occurs, the extent, the volatility of it, it all just, it's all specific. It's all just arbitrary metrics wants to come here should be able to come here how why did we get to come here why did my ancestors get to come here like this isn't our country this th this is turtle island and it belongs to indigenous people a lot of the people that are coming out of the country you don't know who they are and they change their names once they cross the border you guys have any issues with that i mean we don't we don't know who's in this country <laughs> yeah do like you know what? how many shooters and serial killers and people in this country that are incredibly yeah, violent what do you guys think will be the solution to all this a spiritual revolution oh, where literally. people like people truly need, like, understand feel. that we're all connected. These two clearly share the same brain cell, and as you can see, it's not working. They're nearly as slow as this next muppet. Even um, okay, that's the migrant stuff. Firstly, who gives a fuck whose country it is here and there? You can't really control for the stupid shit that the people b before you came and did to each other. You just have to try to co like compensate in a way that doesn't resort result in more violence and nonsense and mayhem, but people aren't good enough to do that, so you're never gonna get that. You really shouldn't give a shit who does or doesn't come to your country. It's not really gonna have a, an adverse effect on the outcome of the quality of the place. It really just depends on its governing, on, on the standards that the people hold themselves to, on the values that people have, which are gonna, again, arbitrary bullshit. Everywhere you go, you're gonna get dumb shit here or there. Always. A spiritual revolution. That doesn't mean anything. Like, if they could ex articulate what that means, you wouldn't get anything. You just get nonsense. Man, there's a lot of stupid shit. These are all the people who are out on the streets sharing their opinions on these various things. And of course, like, the people who are going in to interview these people, they know what they're going to be running into. So I guess it's just more content for their audiences. So, kind of like Erico. It's the same thing. Same types of people coming to watch the same types of videos. It's all, um, it's people trying to put themselves into groups. Even though we would call the police if we're in trouble, the police are a repressive system. They do not do any good for any community. They are not stopping crime. Police arrive after crime has been committed. We fund the police as if they solve all the community's problems. We should defund the police and put that money towards community resources, like mental health, drug addiction, rehabilitation, schools, community programs, and it would keep people out of committing crimes. The cops, all they do is try to get as many brown and black people into the prison system because incar mass incarceration these days is really just modern day slavery. What? So even if I might call the cops if I need help, f the cops, f the police, f the way that system runs. The police do more bad than they do good. But you would call them if you needed help? Yes. <laughs> god damn it! You can't make this shit up! Yeah. Oh god, there was so much that they went over in that. Fuck. I'll try to hit as many points as I can. Alrighty. Sounds like an American. The American police, sure, they are not very good. Uh, it, they have very small amounts of criteria for people to become police. The police aren't taught to de-escalate. They aren't taught any, like, grappling. There aren't any proper physical prerequisites. It's just shooting and escalating the situation and trying to siphon more people into a system that profit that profits from housing and feeding and outsourcing their um labor for cents on the hour it, it, it's modern day slavery through that lens but like everywhere else there's kind of just slavery every labor exploitation is a universal problem it's definitely a huge problem especially in a first world country like america which america has no excuse for that if you go to a third world country it makes sense why things are the way that they are <laughs> but in america America is the most powerful, the, the richest in the world because of stuff like that. So American police are definitely garbage. Um, but you kind of like, who else are you going to have to to help you in, in a situation? They aren't very good at solving crimes. Sure, that's not the police themselves. They aren't really good at collecting uh, like information. 
that which determines their actions afterwards. It's just a bunch of mindless emotion. Yes, if that's the argument, America police, they are pretty much garbage. But like I said, who else are you gonna call? The Ghostbusters? Are you gonna defend yourself with your with a gun? Really? Is that that the place you really want to be living in? In a place where you have to resort to a fucking firefight, uh, a shootout with potential people who are trying to hurt you? Just like, get away from all that crap. How about that? Um, defund the police. It's doesn't technically mean remove, like, just not give them money. It's a really stupid name for that. It's like, why are you calling it defund? Defund means to, you'd think, just by the word itself, it would mean just to take away the money, when it really means reallocate resources in different ways. I do believe that we should prioritize rehabilitation instead of punishment, but again, that kind of just plays into people's sense of wanting, like, vindictive justice and shit like that. Like, people are bloodthirsty. And that is true. If you put people into these slave dens, you know, prisoners, which the, the prison system, the prison industrial complex is designed to siphon people's lives for them, is to scoop up as many people as, off the streets as they can based on just very strict, small, easy to, uh, easy to break criteria, and then just make money off of housing them and shit. That's true. And yes, on top of that, it makes it worse because a lot of these people, they will become repeat offenders, especially if you put them into a place where they get tortured and they become an animal. They're going to go out onto the streets and they're going to conduct themselves like animals because you were treating them like that. If we prioritize rehabilitation, now it's not just that. There's a billion different things you have to change. It's kind of like with gun rights, right? You can't just, and especially in a place like America, it's not, this place isn't, Australia. You can't just enforce mandatory buybacks and then have that solve the problem itself. It's it's a cultural thing. It was in, Americans are indoctrinated into seeing gun ownership as an as an identity. You would need way more than just like mandatory buybacks. We're not gonna get into that right now. We'll maybe come across a video like that. But let's keep going to the points that she's talking about. Actually, yeah, hopefully we went over everything. I probably glossed over a few things. Yes, if you prioritize rehabilitation, we're just talking about that, you are gonna get better outcomes. If you treat people like with humanity, they're going to respond more likely with humanity. It's just how humans work. <laughs> if you treat somebody like garbage, they're probably going to respond to you like garbage. It's a crazy concept, I know. But yeah, let's just let's just keep moving. There's a lot of points being made in a lot of these videos, and it's just a heavy subject. So we'll eventually cover those in videos that we come across, If uh, which was probably inevitable given the sheer extent of videos that I make. <laughs> We will probably come over these topics again and we can discuss more in depth on these particular things. But I think I've gotten enough out to get us to move on. Let's see what you have to say here. Yeah, defund the police, get rid of them. But if I get in trouble, call them. How about no? Then I... Yes, it is ironic. But again, defund means reallocate sources, re resources, not so much remove. But yes, the name itself is fucking stupid. Why would you call it defund? Why not just say, uh, move move money around in different ways, spend it on other shit, instead of just arming the police so that they can kill people, which that is, the American police are, that's what their purpose is for the most part. It's more destruction, but that's not entirely the argument. They were kind of making that. That was part of one of the many, many things that they said. Not everything they said was entirely, entirely uh, incorrect, but um, yeah, let's just keep moving. Idea to house migrants in private citizens' homes. Sounds good to me. Could you ever see yourself housing a migrant? Not right now, not this. <laughs> Point, no. If they want to put somebody up, then why shouldn't they? Would you be willing to sign this today and invite a migrant into your home? No. I think that's like a really good idea. I mean, yeah, why not? Could you ever see yourself housing a migrant in your home? I mean, totally. Yeah, why not? If you sign this, we can get a migrant into your home and as early as next week. Would you want to sign this today? No, because I live with my parents. <laughs> Do you think you could ask your parents? I don't know. Bullshit. They're like uh, it really shouldn't be incumbent upon private citizens to have to house other people given that there's if the resources were allocated in right ways you could house everyone you can give everyone house you can give everyone clean food everyone clean water isn't that shouldn't that be the point of a government take care of people but no that's not gonna happen. that's not how it works remember money is the thing that determines how much money people can make off of something is usually what determines the moves that they make humans as a species have more than a capability to be able to provide like a good life for everyone, but humans are mindless, disgusting creatures. We will never be able to figure that out. We can, if like some type of crazy, uh, I can't even say like the, the most optimistic outcome of everything, which I don't think that would ever happen. Realistically, humans can do those things. We just, for the most part, don't. But yeah, it is funny how these people are saying, oh, I, you know, I think it's good for migrants to set up shop in someone's house. Would you do it? Nah. It's because they, they, these people and these people that they're asking on this video only really give a shit about their, themselves and their own, val their own values and their own feelings, yada, yada. They're all, they're all selfish idiots. But the idea itself, it's like, yeah, housing is totally available to everyone. It's just not available because the people who make these houses and define these rules and set these things in certain ways 
are the ones that are preventing people from having access to it. Because why would they just give it access to them if the point is to make money? Why would you, you would need to deprive people. The more that you deprive people, the more that you can get them to be more vulnerable, to be more desperate so that they can make moves on your behalf to, you know, put more money in your pocket. That's the point. But like I said, humans are more than capable of building a world in which everyone's able to live a life of freedom and peace and security. But humans are very stupid, mindless animals. So that stuff is not going to happen, realistically speaking. Like so many people, they're fake little virtue signalers who don't actually give a shit about the people they claim to feel bad for. Let me ask you a question. What is a woman? A woman is someone who... Just answer the damn question. Identifies as one. Answer the question yeah. without saying the word woman. You can't say the word woman. That's called circular reasoning. It's like saying a tree is something that looks like a tree. What is a woman? A woman is a person who lives a lifestyle aligned with feminine characteristics, not necessarily your chromosomes or your genitals. So, so someone who just wears a dress. So what you are doing is you are reducing womanhood to a costume. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. It makes me laugh because most of these people know the answer. They're just so scared to say it because they don't want to get cancelled or in trouble. They're so terrified they're willing to make themselves look like Muppets in front of a room full of people like this guy just did. Can you? Or maybe they were just indoctrinated into a certain set of ideals that are most pervasive in his time and place that he exists in. The question itself, what is a woman? person who has, I think it was, men have XY chromosomes, right? I, don't, I forget which one it is. XY chromosomes, women have xx or whatever that's it yeah biologically speaking that's what that is now if you get into the social aspect of stuff right feminine and masculine there's a spectrum this is remember i'm not a fucking scientist and you get different shit from different scientists but this is the information i came across there's masculine feminine and there's space in between right you can come across a woman who's more masculine in nature or just the way that they are. I don't even know if it's nature. I'm not sure what determines these things. I think that's way too complex for us to understand. You can find a man with feminine features, but if you look at biological sex, yes, that is that is defined. You're either a man, because you have penis XY chromosomes, or XX, I forgot fucking which one it is. I think it's XY. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that all that shit's a mess. It's also just super complicated, because it's like, pe people are trying to break themselves down into these these individual labels that they use to define everything, but it's like, life's never really that simple. Always nuanced to everything. It's kind of like, what defines the personality? What defines the individual? You look at the history of like a serial killer, abuse, trauma, all the works, they ended up, it makes sense why they ended up that way, but there's other people you can look at who went through very similar shit, and remember, everything's specific to the individual. Everyone is unique in the sense of we all go through a sequence of events that are specific to us as individuals. You can never replicate that at any time or place. So in that in that sense, we're all in, uh, in the individuals and we're all alone in that sense because nobody else, else can truly understand that. But there's other people who go through that type of shit and they don't end up that way because of shit that we just don't understand. Why is it that this guy became a serial killer by going through that shit versus this other person who went through very similar shit and didn't turn out that way? You can't really just quantify it to a specific label that you can just slap on and understand it. It's, life is not... Us being able to understand these things has no bearing on life itself. Life just is. Us being able to quantify stuff, that's simply a result of circumstance. Us being able to communicate, us being able to just exist and be humans be able to get to this point in history and do these things, it's all just circumstance. Life wasn't made to be understood, uh, yet we're trying to understand it, which is good. That's, that's how we can try to gain some degree of control. But just know that there is an extent to our understanding and that there's only so much we can know. So don't, don't get too ahead of yourselves here. <laughs> clarify your definition of critical race theory? Uh, yeah, Derek Bells. So what he wrote in 1991, Intro to Critical Race Theory. What's in that book? The whole book is your definition. Wait, but... Are you familiar with that literature? Well, yeah, I've read the book, but I don't remember anything about it. It was for, like, a college class. Like, let's be honest. Nobody remembers the books they read in college. Um, Sounds like a great value proposition to go to college. No, no, no. It is. Trust me. Well, but you didn't go to college, so I guess you wouldn't know. Um, it's true. I didn't. So, so let me ask you, though, does that mean that I'm not able to have this conversation with you? Because I no. actually remember the book, and you didn't, and you paid hey. for it. 
so first of all, I didn't pay for it. Uh, there's these things called scholarships. Oh, so somebody else so, paid for you not to yes. remember the book exactly. that you were supposed to read. Oh, Anyways. some wealthy donor or taxpayer paid for you hey. to not remember the book. Yeah, I don't know what they're teaching or putting in the food in these colleges, but so many of these students are coming out of there dumber and more delusional. Is that your- Okay, yes, this guy's dumb, but like, the person who's at the stand fucking knows that. And this is where they get their content. It's like the what at whatever show. If you invite stupid people on and you dunk on them, it's going to make you look smarter. Why are you here talking to these people? Like, if you really want to know, like, come off as like what you know, which I mean, realistically, just by doing this, he's going to come off like knowledgeable and people are going to jerk him off and all those things. Talk to another person who's actually informed. Talk to an actual like educator. Talk to a scientist. Talk to people who spend a lifetime like learning these things. Instead of just dunking on dumbass college students. Like, come on. That's, that's more, that's the big thing to take away from all that shit. Dude. You, if you really want to, like, know and prove yourself, you should be talking to smarter people. Honestly. Is that your boyfriend that you're with? I'm a woman. What's that? I'm a woman. Yeah, the, the dude you're with, is that? That's my husband. Oh, okay, cool. You're great at answering questions. Um... <laughs> Welcome aboard, folks. We are very proud to share that your pilot is the most diverse pilot on record. She is a three foot two inch transgender pansexual Native American man who identifies as a six foot tall Korean woman. Any volunteers to help reach the controls are welcome. You will want to buckle up as her epilepsy is often triggered by the flashing lights in the cockpit. Remember to keep a whisper volume level as she may have to consult instructional videos as a refresher during the flight. Now, can we get a big cheer for diversity? It's only funny because it's true, but then you realize because it's true, it's not funny and it's actually pretty scary. I do not give a shit about box ticking and diversity when my life is in somebody else's hands. A female dark. Dude, it's a, it's a joke they made in a YouTube video. About Final Destination, what? It's clearly a politically motivated joke, but it's like, what the hell? I don't take that shit seriously. Sounds. A female dart star refused to compete against a trans player. British player Detta Hedman pulled out of the quarterfinal match against male-born Noah Lynn Van Leven. Hedman explained that she wouldn't play a man in a ladies' event. Her would-be opponent, Van Leven, became a woman in 2014. When the trans player joined the Dutch national team, two of her compatriots left in protest. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, darts isn't a physical sport. There's no contact. Why can't they mix it? It says here, men have stronger connections between brain areas for motor and spatial skills. That means males tend to do a better job at tasks that need hand-eye coordination and understanding where objects are in a space such as throwing a ball or hammering a nail. They even did a darts experiment to see if men had an advantage, and it says the eight worst male players were better than the best women. So I- That's fucking funny. And funny enough, that is was kind of what I was thinking. Not because I think that, you know, those things would be mixed, right? Men are just physically stronger and more physically capable than women, just biologically speaking. Not to say that, like, there aren't instances where, like, a girl could beat up a guy or something or like could win against them in a certain uh, exhibition or, or sport or yada yada but for the overwhelming most part the men are going to win because of those physical attributes they possess because of their biological sex yeah interesting i guess smart to pull out so it doesn't fuck up your record or something good move <laughs> so i applied for a job at tj maxx a few weeks ago and they denied my application. They couldn't even call me. They just sent me some automated email. So I went in today and I was like, so what was the reason I didn't get hired? And she was like, oh, like you just like don't have enough experience. There was candidates that had like more experience than you. And, you know, I asked her if it was about my tattoos, obviously, because I know a lot of places don't like tattoos. She said that wasn't the reason. I don't feel like that's true. Well, no fucking shit. Or lunatic. And maybe the employer should be a little bit more straightforward. I mean, it's kind of like how you go into an interview and you don't tell them the truth so that you can get the job. You're all just trying to, everyone's trying to make moves for their own benefit. Dude, I got my first two jobs. The only reason I got those had nothing to do with experience. I grew up with the guy, I went to school with the guy who sold weed to the managers for two of them, two of the jobs. It's a joke, man. Everyone's wrong. Everyone's just mindless animals. Lunatics trying to make weights 
woke. You heard that correctly. Alyssa Royce, the owner of Rocket Community Fitness, a CrossFit gym in, you guessed it, Seattle, is now urging CrossFit box owners to stop designating barbells as men in women's bars. 45 pounds equals a men's bar and 35 pounds a woman's bar, but apparently she says this is silly because barbells don't have genders. They have weights. One of her main arguments is that you are implying that if a man cannot (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's it's not the, it's just funny the way that you said that. Barbells did it, they're weights, how does that mean? <laughs> it's just a weird thing to say. I don't know, I mean, you could just have the weights be weights, and then you try it, and if it's too much, you just try a smaller weight? Uh, I don't know. That seems to like, it seems like it'd be easier to, like, produce those things, or the weights, instead of making them gender asso- gender associated. You'd think, I don't know too much about this stuff, but it's like, you'd think it'd be easier if you just make the weights, weights, <laughs> not gender weights. I don't know. Um, I don't know how that stuff works, or there there may or may not be more of a reason as to why those things are the way that they are. I was just thinking at it through a more like production lens. Just produce weights, and then if women can't, you know, weight, you know, pull a certain weight, then it's like, all right, go for a smaller weight. Put on, put on ones that weigh less. That's my, that's my reasoning. That if a man cannot handle the heavier barbell, that he is less of a man. Well, newsflash, Alyssa, this is a bad thing. I am 5'2", 102 pounds, and even I can handle the men's bar. Oh, but it gets even worse. The owner also says that by having men in women's bars, you are excluding not binary folks. This has gotten so out of control. If you are offended by a bar being labeled according to the gender that they are typically used for, then please do me and everybody else a favor. Just stay home. Look, I don't care what you are, whether you're trans, non-binary, what race you are. I don't think that's the problem. I think it's just certain people that need to get a life or go see Michael. Get some help. Alrighty, um, yeah, that last one, I don't know too much about weightlifting and shit. I don't know. Uh, my reasoning was just like, have it all be the same, and then if a girl can't lift a certain bar with a certain amount of weights, just put less weights on it. And that's what I think. Uh, but maybe there's more of a reason as to why that is the way that it is, or maybe not. I don't know, maybe it's just a, a ploy to get people to buy more shit, right? Because if you have more stuff to sell people, oh, you gotta include everyone, then you have more shit that you can, more money that you can make from that. I guess through a capitalist lens, uh, whatever. Alrighty, cool. That was that video.